Hello there. Um, you can see I'm in a very green area and the air here is quite different. I have a very interesting guest. This, this guest is someone we've been speaking with for some weeks now. Um, she just came back from Russia. It's going to be the first interview I'm having with anyone from that far off anywhere in the world. And she's going to tell us her story. My name is Echi Atisu. I welcome you once again to this program. Hello, Dr. Paulina. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing well. And uh, we get to finally meet. Yes. After how many weeks we've been talking and all that? Three weeks, I think. Yeah, it's been long. <laughs> yes. How are yes. you doing? I'm doing well. Uh, you, you came back just a few days ago and already we, we, yes. we dragged you out here exactly. for this interview. <laughs> yes, uh, please. How's Russia, by the way? Russia is fine. Cool. Mm. Yes. Is, is, the, is the war still on? Yeah, it's kind of going on a little, but... Um, it didn't affect was, you any? Not really, not okay. really. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and the reason we're having this conversation with you is because Ghana Web had done a story about mm -hmm. you uh, when you got your red diploma, which is something we'll talk about much later in the interview. But then you reached out, okay. which a lot of people don't do. And we decided, why not? So we want to hear your story. Uh, and I want to begin from, from home. You are back home now. I want to know you a little bit. Who is Dr. Paulina Dente? Okay, Dr. Paulina. My name is Dr. Paulina Dente. Is mm. a recent graduate from the Yaroslav Medical School okay. in Russia, Novgorod State. is based in Novgorod, mm -hmm. and also um, a health advocate and a CEO of Remedy Foundation. Okay. Yes. So I'm sure we'll talk about that more yes. when we start yes. our interview. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, 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 so that's you in a bit. Uh, what kind of family did you grow up with? In, in? What, what kind of family? From a Christian home. Okay. Yeah, very, very disciplined. <laughs> yes. And that's... The military kind? <laughs> <laughs> Not really, but very disciplined. Okay. And then from a humble home, a very prayerful family as well. Okay. Yes. Okay. I see. And then, along the way, you decided to jackpot. <laughs> yes. And you went all the way to Russia. How, what was the decision? What informed that decision to move from Ghana all the way to Russia? Why? There were not okay. people here to train you. Okay. Thank you so much for mm. this question. Um, first of all, I've always wanted to become a medical doctor. Mm -hmm. So having that passion or the dream of becoming a medical doctor and not just any kind of a me medical doctor. I wanted to be a doctor that will help uh, solve most problems that the world faces. Uh, so Russia is known to be one of the countries that are very um, good at some of the solving problems in terms mm -hmm. of uh, medical aspect or our health aspect. For example, we know that during the COVID-19, yeah. Russia was the first country to discover the vaccine for the COVID-19. Mm. And recently, they have been able to, or they are about to discover also, no, I think they've discovered the vaccine for cancer, okay. which we know that cancer is a sickness that face, most people face across the world. And, once you get it, you know that you're at your end points. Mm -hmm. But this is a country that is able to discover this. And I've always had a dream to be part of such countries to also learn and then impact it into other people in helping health problems. That means, that means it's about the groundbreaking yes. acumen of Russia yes. that got you there. But before you left, which schools did you go to in Ghana? So I went to Methodist Girls Senior High School. Manfi Methodist oh, Girls Senior High School. One for robotics, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I went there. And right. then from there, I street, I went straight to Russia to do okay. my medicine. Okay. Yes. So that means that when you left senior high school, you went to Russia? Yes. Was it on a scholarship? Yes, I was on a scholarship. Okay. So I went to Russia on a scholarship. Okay. And you were there for how many years? For seven years. Seven years? Yes. Doctor? <laughs> That's how, that's how long it takes to become a doctor. <laughs> exactly. Very interesting. But, but tell me your first experiences when you got to Russia. What were some of the experiences leaving your home, Ghana, after so long, getting into a new country like Russia? Okay, so it was not easy when I got to Russia because first of all, we know that in Russia, 
they speak more of the Russian language. They mm -hmm. don't speak English, or so most of their cities don't have English. Okay. Even in the cities that you can hear people speak English, Moscow, it's just few people. So one was a language barrier, mm -hmm. and two was also the weather. Russia is known to be one of the coldest countries. Yeah. We go to the extent of negative 31. Sometimes you have mm. to even double wear your trousers and a whole lot of stuff. So it was not easy at all. So those were some of the challenges. And also Russians are known, to, they are nice people, very cool people. Mm -hmm. But getting to a country where you can't speak a language for the first time, you're not coming to study, start studying with the foundation, that's the foundation, uh, language foundation, is very difficult. So those were the early challenges. And which is an interesting aspect of your entire story because exactly. <laughs> you, you were able to surmount all of those things to the point where you you were perhaps one of the most sought after persons and immigrants of the sort in that country. And I want you to just carry us along that journey. At what point did you break through the barrier of not being able to speak the language and then actually mastering it? Tell okay. us that story. So when I go to Russia, mm -hmm. As I already said, the language is a, a, one of the biggest uh, problems okay. from the beginning for me. Mm -hmm. And I started with the language foundation, which we studied for one year. So during the language foundation, I put in my efforts. I studied very hard okay. and I started catching up with the language. But it was not all that much. I was able to say the basic stuff like good morning, good afternoon. And how do you say stuff. that in Russian? By good the way. morning. Is as Dobrai Utra. Okay, Dobrai Utra. Da. Okay. <laughs> and good afternoon is Dobrai Din. Dobrai and Din. Din, yeah. Okay. And good evening is Dobrai Vitra. Okay, so the Dobra is good? Yes. Okay, interesting. <laughs> okay, I'm learning okay. something. All yeah, right. so um, after the language school, before, uh, we took an exam. It's after you pass this language, uh, the language that you'll be able to start your medicine in the language. So mm. I passed the language very well, whatever subjects that were involved. I remember one of the subjects I was the highest in the whole language foundation. Yes, I topped the whole language foundation there. And, and, you, and this was you, an African? Yes. Were there other yeah. Africans yes. like yes, you? Yes, Okay. So with the language foundation, we are all, we are all Africans. Okay. Yeah, so right. we can talk about people from Morocco, Cote d'Ivoire, Gabon, Congo, and, and so on. But you didn't have anyone else from Ghana? We had a lot of other students okay. from Ghana, right. yes. At least you got some people who were familiar with yes, you to speak please. with. Okay. All right. And you topped that yes. course. Yes. So the language school was successful. Then mm -hmm. I started the medical school. Okay. So another thing was when I got to Russia, from our seniors who are already there, I was told uh, it's impossible for foreigners to get this red diploma, which I think we'll be talking more yes. when we start our interview. Mm -hmm. So I told myself, no, <laughs> I'm that kind of person that likes challenges a lot. I told myself, no, I think there is nothing which is impossible. Everything is possible okay. based on the individual. Mm -hmm. So I put in more efforts to study. And then um, at the first, during the first year, it was very challenging because first year now we, are, we mixed with the Russians. And that's where they test for the language. Exactly. It's already their language. We are borrowing it from them. <laughs> so the lectures come to the... Uh, lecturing halls, okay. they will lecture you in Russian language. You have to write your notes in Russian language. Assignments and other things have been given in Russian language. So it was difficult, but I managed. Sometimes I, I, I asked some of some few help from my Russian classmates and so on. So after the first year, I realized that I started getting most of the grades, which is five. Five, uh, which is equivalent to A or A plus in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Okay. I started getting all the A's and I told myself, no, I think with my starting, if I put in more efforts, something good will come out of it. And my mind and my targets was already, I and wanted to red. feel why, what is this red and why is it impossible for foreigners to get a red? <laughs> so as time goes on, my second year to more effort and the mark started coming. So that was how come. L let me take you back a little. Okay. What? Or where was the interest to do medicine? Is it, is it just like you mentioned, you wanted to be a part of groundbreaking things or what was it? Why, why medicine? Okay, so uh, growing up as a kid, I've always had a passion to help people. Okay. So through that, I decided 
that, okay, I want to do medicine. And also, I think a family member of mine went to the hospital and because of how sometimes they are being treated, I just have that passion that no, uh, if somebody don't have to be my family member or a friend to be treated well in terms of medical okay. care. I would like to be that person that will be help to everyone, would like to help everyone. So that was where the passion came. Mm. Yeah. So even when I go to Russia, when I see an old woman trying to uh, climb or something or struggling with her luggage, I always want to help. Okay. I'm that kind of person that always wants to help. That was where I got that passion of. And you know, medicine is a service to humankind, yes. helping and you yes. know, treating people. That's why. I see. Yeah. Now you scale first year. Okay. Second year, you're great at doing a little better and all of that. What are some of the highlights of your entire training in Russia because I know al along the, the, the training you you had to deal with the usual um, Ukraine war and also COVID. Okay. How did any of those things impact you? And I want to hear some of the highlights, the major, major highlights that happened okay, during so your training. During the training, um, one of the things I could say, it, it was okay, but immediately the war started. There was a lot of panics, okay. especially from home. Family members have seen a whole lot going on on the TVs and other social medias. And so those were the major challenges. And also during the COVID-19, we're not able to go to the hospitals as we used to go when the COVID wasn't. At that point, which year were you in? Okay, so during the COVID-19, I was in my second year. Okay. Yes. Okay, still yeah. had a long way to go. Exactly. So if it came to a time where we're told that maybe a time will come that will be evacuated back to our country. Mm. And I asked myself, so the language to plans my second year, meaning that I'm already done with three years or I'm halfway three yeah. years. So I might train it three years away and coming back to Ghana. So those were the early challenges. But most uh, online classes were done. We're taking okay. online classes. Put, okay. I put in all the effort as well. Mm -hmm. Just stayed focused, and I didn't allow any other thing to distract me, especially mm -hmm. family members calling. They wanted to come home. Is everything okay? And so on. Mm -hmm. So I think it was after that that the war started. The war wasn't in uh, when I was no. The war started. I think somewhere when I got to my fourth year early. I finished early third year, getting to fourth year. That was when the the war also started. So like two years after COVID. Yes, exactly. Started. And with the war, a lot of things happen. Challenges like uh, they've closed all borders. You can't get access to maybe other things that you need from home. Mm -hmm. Even uh, you can't get access to some of the all lines we shop, books, libraries where we, we read because there are lots of sanctions and even foods that we are used to like McDonald's and other things were all closed. That means that your your studies were limited at a point. You mentioned books that you were not getting. Yes. So how were you learning? Um, okay, so we're just using made in Russia. <laughs> made in Russia? Yeah. What's that? Made in Russia basically means if I couldn't get access to maybe some online books like English to get them, them more understanding from there, I just read the books that were given to us in the library from the medical school, which is in Russian language. And we do the medicine in Russian language, so we study in Russian language. Most of these books are already in our libraries, so wow. I just use that to keep on mm. going. Yes, please. I see. So now you've been able to get to the point where you are able to read yes. very well. Yes, please. To the extent that you don't even have to depend on external literature. At all. So I just take my Russian. From the beginning, I translate because when you read the language, you need the understanding. You have to read and then translate it back into English to understand. Okay. But it got to a time I just pick the Russian textbooks or whatever material it says, and I read and I get all the understanding from it. So now there was no need for you to even read English material at all. Is that what shot you into full scale learning to get this red diploma? Yes, please. What is the red diploma, by the way? Okay, so a red diploma, we call it diploma diplom. in Russia. Okay. Okay, so a red diploma is a certificate awarded to best students. Mm -hmm. um, before, the best student overall? No, like best students. Okay, all, okay. all the best students. Yes, so uh, to be able to get this red diploma, one, 
you don't need to have a satisfactory mark grade. That is one. Two, um, you are supposed to be able to, you know, do other research for the university. Mainly, maybe going for competitions. We call it Olympiads, Olympiada okay. in Russian language, mm -hmm. and so on. And also, uh, it's also given to students who have attained maybe all A's in their academics, meaning that from the first year of the medical school to that of the final year, you have all A's. Okay. Yes. Is it that an A or A plus? Yes, please. So that is, and also the GPA of okay. this, to be able to get a red diploma in relation to GPA, it should be for, from 4.75 above out of five years okay. before and, you can get this. what was your GPA? Oh, <laughs> I was supposed to tell people out there. My GPA was 4.8, which is oh, wow. approximately 5. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes, please. And that made you the first the, African. Yes, please. African. To Meaning ever... that not only a female, not only a Ghanaian, but all the Africans in the medical school. I'm the first black African. Yeah. And that's, that's actually my guess. That's Dr. Paulina Dente. Um, first black person to get a red diploma from Russia. Well, the conversation will continue. When we come back from this break, we'll take a sit down and then we'll get more into her story. Don't go anywhere. My name is Etiati, so my guest is Dr. Paulina Dente. Dr. Paulina. <laughs> so now you are the first black person to ever get this red diploma. How did you feel about, that, about that, that recognition? I felt so fulfilled. Okay. Because I made a promise to myself. All right. That I like challenges. So taking certain risks, I feel, I, 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 I think at the end of it, there should be a result. So I felt so fulfilled that mm. I was able to achieve what I set my mind towards. Did you get calls from home, your parents? Yes, What please. did they tell you? <laughs> Not only parents, even my colleagues mm. the russians okay they were so impressed because they've started they've studied with other blacks too and they know how it's very difficult for with the foreigners in terms of uh doing medicine in russian language so everybody was just happy for me I see. all my professors were so proud mm. yes they had to call me to take pictures with them everywhere that's, that's nice <laughs> yes then that means you must have do, been doing something very different unique something that excited your professors yes what, what was it about your time in school that excited them so much that because you could have just gotten this recognition without why were they so excited for you so the excitement was the fact that i was very hard working okay and in terms of towards my studies and also i became a teaching assistant for the same medical school i stayed in i studied in which is the Yuraslav, the wise novgorod state university well, so while you were in school studying yes, as yes. a student you were also a teaching assistant in the same medical school and you were teaching in russian no i was teaching in english okay okay so but you needed me... to understand russian to be able to teach. exactly and i was doing translation for the school as well to, for some of the departments so you translated um, from what was i translate from russian language to english the russian got really good yes and I have to sit down and draft. Okay. Because some translation from Russian language to English doesn't give you that correct weight yes. in terms of the English language. So, so structure and everything would have to change. To be able to draft it correctly, and there are already materials there that students are going to use. Okay. So I sit and I read through. So when I see a word in Russian language that has been translated in English, I know that it's not correct. Then I quickly have to type it or change it. Hmm. So yes, I became a teaching assistant. I was teaching... Uh, public health All right. in the medical school. I taught fourth year medical students, third year medical students, and I was taking them for, my, for exams as well and translating all the study materials from Russian language to English language. How are you combining studying <laughs> on your own, translating for the school, teaching other students, and ensuring that you are getting, like you mentioned, all the A's? Are you some Einstein <laughs> in, a, in a female body? <laughs> no, please. How um, are you able to do all of that? I mean, uh, all my life, I've been in a boarding house. Okay. Even from Ghana, my primary JHS, 
I was in Mata Ecclesia. Okay. It's at uh, Soko de Bogame at Ho, Water okay. Region. Yeah. So I'm just this disciplined person towards my books. I enjoy learning more. Yes. So even though it was very tough, combining this to my own studies, mm -hmm. what I do is I go for my class or my lectures. I make sure I don't miss lectures too. I don't think all my seven years in Russia have ever missed lectures. Even when I'm sick, I'll go to class. Wow. Some of my colleagues know this about me. <laughs> yes. So after my lectures, then I go to do the teaching. So the professors put the timetable in a way that it wouldn't affect my studies as well. Okay. But it was very difficult because four or five hours of my studies and going to stand to lecture about 80 students and going for practical classes too with them. So as I'm talking, my first group of students are now in their final year. Oh, wow. They'll be graduating as medical students as well. And my second group of students are going to their fourth year, That's their nice. fifth year. That's nice. Yes. Congratulations to you. Thank you. And well done. <laughs> and that's, all of that led to what you got at the end of the, the day. The red, um, okay, red so diploma. the red has nothing to do with my translation for the school mm -hmm. and my teaching assistant thing. It was just studies. It was studies because one thing about Russia is, I mean, some of these teachers feel that it's impossible for you, a black, to get a five, which is equivalent to an A mm. in, our, in our Ghana system. Um, so it, was, it has nothing to do with the teaching assistant. It was fully my studies. Mm. No professor I, I assisted at it, as a teaching assistant had to even come to talk for either give a red or she did it. No, they don't care about that. It is your hard work. One thing I like about rushing uh, in terms of like status is that when you deserve something you deserve it I see. yes now on the red diploma what did it signify was it just the recognition no not only the recognition so uh when you're a foreigner and you get a red diploma automatically you are qualified to have permanent residence in russia and then i think if i stand to be corrected but i after three years you get a Russian passport okay. and to become a Russian. But you're back in Ghana. <laughs> yes, please. What happened? <laughs> Are you here to stay? Um, yes, I'm here to stay. You remember it earlier on, I made mention that I've always had the passion to help okay. and also to get involved with a country that they are so good at medicine okay. or in discoveries mm -hmm. in, in relation to a health. So I feel now I've gotten most of the skills okay. that could help my country as well. So I thought of coming back to help my country with all the skills I've acquired and to also learn more from you as well. So you're back? Yes, please. You're not going back to Russia? Um, I made mention of permanent residence, so mm -hmm. meaning that I'll be able to go to Russia anytime I want. Just because of your red diploma? Yes. Okay. And I can also go there and specialize in the future okay i want to be a cardiologist but but ultimately you want to stay here and help for health, some time yes system, yes yeah. please okay and also not only the not only the recognition not only the permanent residence um in russia that too you are you get that kind of uh how should i an opportunity to work with big big hospitals mm -hmm. people call you and they want to work with you and other things because the red shows that you're a distinction student. Okay. Yes. So most of these big big hospitals in their countries or around across the cities there will always want to have that kind of uh working environment with you. So it comes with a lot of packages. I see. Yes, please. So now that you are back, I mean the opportunity to go back there is still there. Yes. But you are back. What are you going to be doing are you just going to be around look for work somewhere or are you about your own thing okay so with foreign trained doctors when we come back to ghana we are supposed to take our yeah. uh, ghana a uh, mdc yeah. which is the medical and dental council examination yeah. to be able to get your licenses mm -hmm. to do your two years mm -hmm. housemanship okay yes so that's what i'll be working towards now and now we have um we are all supposed to do a six months internship in some selected hospitals in Ghana year. After okay. the six months, you'll be able to register for your medical and dental council examination. But how about yourself? Is there anything personally you are, any project, any initiative you are embarking on? 
Yes, please. Okay. Okay, so I started a remedy foundation. Uh, when you go to my website or Google, it's remedyfoundation.space. Okay. So this is a foundation that I've started. What are you into when you say remedy? What's okay. that? Okay. So Remedy Foundation is basically a non-profit organization committed in transforming the health system in Africa. Okay. So in terms of the underserved people mm -hmm. and um, people who need health care the most in Africa. So that is Remedy Foundation. So with the foundation, it's in two parts. We have the NGO parts, okay. and then we have the Remedy AI part. Because when you look at my stories that were viral, you could hear that they said, I'm, I'm working on an IA that will be help transform the healthcare system in the world and in Ghana as well. Let me put it Africa. Okay, yes. so it's an AI thing you're working on? It's not only AI. It's the foundation is, is divided yes, so into aspect, two parts. Yes, that so aspect we have the AI you. remedy aspect. Okay. So I can explain that. Please. So the AI remedy is um, basically when somebody go to the website, which, which is the remedy dot space, mm -hmm. you register and then you get access to communicate with an AI doctor. Okay. I have an AI software developer who is at India, an AI operator in the USA. Yes, and okay. other people. So these are my team members. So you get the access to be able to communicate with an AI doctor, being it wherever you find yourself. Okay. Yes. Um, because you know that some people are so far away that getting access to healthcare sometimes is very difficult. Some people live in the, let's take it like the villages, for instance. Um, maybe where to travel to get access to healthcare can take some many that sometimes people lose their lives. So that is the aspect of the AI. You'll be able to communicate, sit somewhere where there is an emergency. The AI will, treat, will tell you certain things to do. If you even need to see a doctor, the AI will tell you. So that That's means, that aspect of the AI. So does it mean that there will be some professionals like Yes, yourself, specialists. Okay, on hand for, for things like that. And anybody can... What's the class of people who can... No, it's not anybody. As I mentioned, I have an AI software developer at India. Mm -hmm an AI operator in the USA and there will be doctors since it's within the health uh, era okay. it, there will be specialist doctors AI doctors that okay. you can so talk it's actually to. referring to those who can access your services is it just any kind yeah, of person? yeah okay okay please any kind of okay person? yes please sorry for that okay. I now get no, the question fine. very well so yeah <laughs> any anybody okay. at all all right yes I'm sure someone may ask that what of internet because I made mention of the villages yeah. I think we are, technology is developing now mm -hmm. and then we are living in a world where now technology is becoming more advanced and I think I heard that the Starlink or something yes, is coming out very soon. So in. <laughs> good. Yes. So all these things will help and anybody at all can access it. Mm. So when you go to Google, you type remedy.space, you see the website there, you can read more on it. And also that, that aspect of the NGO I mentioned, our vision there is to bridge the gap between healthcare disparities in Africa and also to help educate people on health as a whole. For example, when we go to the villages, mm. we have a lot of young people dying at an early age. Should we take from maybe something like high blood pressure? It's because they are not well equipped and they don't even have, some of them don't even know that they have it. And they eat anyhow, they eat any kind of food. But I think my foundation is going to help go to such places, educate them that if you have high blood pressure, that may be, being it chronic, being it acute, chronic means you've lived with, you are living with it for the rest of your mm -hmm. life. And acute means it just started. Okay. So being it whatever, will be able to educate them on how to eat. For example, patients with high blood pressure, you don't have to take salt. Mm. Yes, but most of these people don't even have the knowledge. So this is a foundation that will help a lot of people out there. Mm. That is basically that. We'll, we'll be taking leave of you shortly. But okay. before we do, is there anything 
else, anything in particular that maybe you'd want to share with us uh, regarding your entire work, anything in your life, <laughs> something quickly before we, we, we part our ways? Okay, so for now, it's just the foundation I'm working on and I will start my internship as well, the six months to be able to write the exam to get okay. my license. Okay. Yes. So that means that the study still goes on? Yes, please. The study still goes on. <laughs> no rest for you. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, but congratulations once again and thank you that um, you made time to speak with us. Okay. We, we had an earlier one when you were way back in yes. Russia. But, but thank you for the face-to-face. -face. And we wish you all the very best as, as you're back here in Ghana. Thank you for returning at least to come and support our health system here. And thank you so much too for giving me the opportunity to be part of this to this program is mm. very important to me very yeah it means a lot to me thank you so much as well thank you as well uh, okay. so that's been dr paulina dente she's she's one of the newest doctors from russia she she received the highest recognition in her her training it's called a red diploma and she was the first black person to do that that has been our interview here on ghana web tv my name is Eche Atisu. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Look for Ghana Web TV. Subscribe. Click on the notification button and you'll get notified anytime we have any new videos. Until another time, bye-bye.